Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of the Facebook integration for our Windows Store app series. My name is Christoph Nazar and I will discuss today about how to get the post on your feeds and how to post your own message or your own link to your feed. But first, let's see what I want to achieve. This is a ca the same kind of application that you have already seen in the previous episode where I can log in and connect to the Facebook service. But unlike the previous episode, I won't want to get the pictures and the photos and the albums, but I will get the post from your feed. Click on the feed and I get all the posts that were done on your feed. I can get a difference between my own post, the one I have done myself, and the one that somebody else has put on my feed. You can see there is a different background. Here is the whole uh, mine. This is my name, but here I get somebody else that did some posts on my feed. And then I also want to be able to do some uh, some messaging. This is a new message. I can also provide a link, like http slash msdn.com. I can provide a name, a caption, and a description, and post it will be posted on the on the feed. That's quite simple. You've seen that I uh, was also able to uh, get the post from uh, one chunk to the other, and I will show you the difference between the the photos and the feed. There is a different paging chunking mechanism. As explained in the previous episode, you should always start by looking at the uh, Facebook developer documentation. But unlike the, the previous case with the photos, uh, there is no direct link. So you need to go to the, the same documentation with the gra graph API re references and you go to user slash feed. Once you get there, as usual, start a, a graph explorer session and you select your access token. Here the difference with the previous one is in the extended permissions. You need to select the publish action if you want to post something on your feed and the read stream if you want to get the list of your feed. Get access token and you always get the confirmation and now you can submit your slash me slash feed request. It's a get request. Submit and then you get the the um, information post by post. As you can see there is the same data section in the JSON return by the request and you get uh, all the posts so if you want to get some more detail instead of being uh, immersed into all this list you just click on the ID and you will get the detail of what you get in one simple post as you can see here. Remember from the previous post, we passed the JSON in the C Sharp, but it's easier to get the format of the of the JSON return from this uh, submit in the in the documentation. So in my case, I will be interested into the ID from which it is uh, emitted by, and we get the message uh, here. It's uh, it was a it, it was a, a test, and then I get some privacy about who can see this, this post, the, the case, the type of, of post and which application was responsible for the post here. I made this test with this uh, Facebook developer which is the Graph API Explorer. You get the creation time and the update time. Simple. If I go back to the, the, the list of all the posts and I go down, I'm expecting light for the photos and album that I get some paging information. As you can see it's from the same paging note, node from the JSON and I get a previous and the next. I will give you more details about how to use this uh, in, the, in the C Sharp code. So let's go to the C Sharp. Okay. Um, I made a change into the login to uh, use the same permissions, the read stream to get the list of the post and the publish action to do uh, a post. 
and that's the only change I have done to the to the application. Then I have created um, a new function, a new helper function, which is get post async, and the same format as with the photos to get a, a suffix that would uh, help me um, define which chunk, which page of post I'm in, interested in. And it's always asynchronous, as usual. So the code is uh, is straightforward, always the same kind of mm, code that we we have already done in the previous episode with the with the photos and the albums. I'm building the URI you've seen in the documentation that is the slash me slash feed, and for the navigation, same as with the previous one, we just add a suffix, which is the one that we get from the um, the paging session here, it will be the next one here and I will extract this information to get the next chunk, the next page of uh, of post. Okay, once I have done this uh, uh, URI construction I'm calling the get task async from the Facebook client uh, passing it the, the pass as a parameter and I get as usual the the JSON res response as a dictionary and in this dictionary I will have the data and the paging sections so I'm first passing the data section as I mentioned I'm interested in the ID and I will get all the other details remember from my previous post I explained that you should always check if uh, there is a value associated to, to the key that uh, that you want because if you if you directly call the uh, the dictionary format and there is no value for this key, you will get an exception. So we have the same protection in my c -sharp code. I get the from, I get the, the name, I get the message, the picture, if there is any picture, the link, the caption, description, the application responsible for, uh, and by the way, there is, a, there is a bug here, the application, and once I've done that, uh, I'm interested in uh, keeping track of only the post that have a message, a name, a caption, and a description. Because you will see uh, when you will do your test that uh, Facebook keep tracks of a lot of um, status change that are emitted either when you navigate or when you do some stuff on your on your Facebook, and you you just don't get any information at all. You get the 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 the, the date, but there is no message, there is no name, there is no caption, nothing. So I've decided to do some filtering here. And uh, for the for the meaningful uh, post, then uh, I keep track of the creation time, update time, and I'm adding a new object where I will store all this information. So I've created a new type, which is a, a post, and I'm just copying all the information. I have the specific publication background. If you remember when I did my demo, I show you that I have a different background. If uh, someone did a post on my feed, or if I did a post on my feed, so that's how I'm doing the the difference. And I will use the data binding from my XAML to automatically select the right uh, background. So again, same information about self-publication. If I'm doing the publication myself, or if it's someone else. And once everything is done, I have the uh, the information about the the picture. If you remember, also from the previous uh, episode, I have to uh, keep track of the URI, and here I'm quite uh, quite happy because I don't have to build a specific URI. It's uh, it's provided by the by the JSON link to to picture. As you can see, it's providing by the JSON. So it's it's quite quite simple. Uh, again, remember when I said that it's my own self publication that I pick the right background, and I'm adding this to the list of, uh, of posts. Okay? Simple. Next one is the paging section. As I mentioned, it's, it's a little bit different from the photos because uh, instead of having a kind of um, a black, black box uh, token that you get here, it's, um, it's time-based. So there is a specific documentation in the Facebook SDK to explain this kind of, uh, of uh, pagination and it's uh, it's quite com complicated. I tried to make it work and it failed mis 
miserably. So I decided to uh, to use a, a trick. So I'm using the the next part of the URL, which is working fine. And uh, then what I'm doing is I'm building myself uh, a stack of uh, of batch. And when I want to go back, clicking on the on the on the back button, I will just uh, pop out the the previous batch that was pushed on my on my stack. It's just a a trick to uh, to work around the uh, issue of uh, back pagination using this field that didn't seem to work for me. Okay, so here I get all the the posts in a, in a list, and then at the end I'm building a new type, which is a post batch, the one that I will uh, add insert it to my into my my stack with the list of of posts and also the next and the and the previous by the way i'm storing the previous but as i just explained i won't use the the previous except to figure out that i'm at the end of the of the stack i mean i'm in the first page and i'm returning the batch so the post back batch you can guess it's just a list of, of posts get the next the next and the previous and figure on, figuring out if there is a previous or there is a next so i can bind to the uh, the uh, unable state of my uh, button. Simple to wear. Here's this used. It's in my main page. And in my main page, I will go to. Uh, I get the login, the same function as uh, before, and I try to get the first batch. You see, I have my stack of post batch, and I'm just calling the get post async. Very very simple, and I make it. Uh, everything visible because once I'm starting to display a page I can imagine that I can go to the next page and go go back otherwise if I'm not logged in everything is uh, is not visible and I'm pushing this bash on my stack and I'm asking to update the the, the, the post the update of the post is uh, just changing the data context of my grid uh, and on my grid view very very simple so that's uh, how the fetching of the the post from your feed is working. So what do I need to do to myself post something on my feed? So what I will do is again going back to the to the um, documentation, going back to the documentation, and changing the kind of request I will do. So it won't be a a get here, but I will do a post because I will send something. It's an HTTP post, and then I will change the format. So I will send a message, for example, message, and I'm just writing the kind of message I want. So message to be displayed again because it's the same one I've just sent. As you can see, I have to uh, to kind of format, because as you can imagine, this is a, an HTTP request, and I, 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 I'm not able, I'm not allowed to have like space in my uh, in my query string. And if I'm doing a, a submit, what I will get is, uh, is the ID of the new post. And if I take a look at my, uh, my Facebook account, you will see the, the new, find my here it is so this is my uh, previous test and if I'm refreshing I should get a new post this time you see this is my message to be displayed again okay simple so it's not a get it's a post now and I have to pass some information uh, to be uh, encoded, so it uh, so it works again. And this is the first issue I have to to solve in my C sharp code. Let's go to the C sharp code. So why is there any issue here? Well, if you come from the .NET uh, old time, then you get used to to uh, take advantage of the system .NET web utility class that provide the kind of uh, escaping that you are looking for here and so uh, we had to find a, a replacement for uh, for that and the, the replacement is uh, 
is simple, so I will show you the post message async. F12. So the post message async is using the URI dot escape URI string. And this is the new API you should use for a Windows Store application if you want to escape some uh, some string with space and uh, and uh, forbidden uh, characters inside the the URI. The URI. Once you get this uh, this message, again you will uh, define your uh, query string that you want to uh, to to send to to post to the Facebook uh, SDK by using the Facebook client class. And here there is a uh, there is a, a tiny problem. I mean tiny because uh, if you try to use the Facebook uh, client class itself, you will get an exception when you call the uh, the the post async method. So I had to uh, to do some uh, some some change for that. And what I did is I I'm again building my uh, my HTTP request myself by using the HTTP client class. It's very close to uh, what you can expect. I'm just changing the uh, the the header to make it uh, OAuth compatible, and I'm passing the access token which is stored by the Facebook client. Please go back to the first or the second episode of this series where uh, Juan Luca explains how to get the, uh, the access token if you want more detail about that. But once you get the access token, you set it to the HTTP client default uh, request header and then uh, you build the URI. You see it's very very close to what I get from the from the um, the Facebook SDK documentation. It's exactly the same slash me slash feed, but instead of calling, uh, 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 doing a, um, a web request, uh, then what I'm doing is a, is a post web request by using the post async using the HTTP client. And then uh, I'm uh, inspecting the status code, and I want it to be successful to be sure that I get the ID of the post. This is what I'm doing here, I'm extracting the, uh, the um, ID from the JSON written by the, by the response, that content. And in my case, I'm not doing anything with it, but uh, you can imagine that uh, you want to, uh, to show uh, this uh, specific uh, new entry in your feed in a specific proper for, for example. Okay? That's, that's the, uh, the simple way to send a, a message so you see, you just add a add a message to the to the to the query string, and uh, it will work. There is another uh, kind of post that you can do is posting a link. What is posting a link? It's very similar to a message. Let me show you in the documentation. So I get back here, and instead of having a, a message, I can keep the same message, let me make it a little bit bigger, so I get the message, so it will be message, associated to the link, and then I will add a name, so I'm building myself my, uh, my query string, and it will be like um, link, and link equal. I have built uh, the link. Oops, sorry. I have built the link on the side to avoid tapping too much. So the link will be the documentation to Facebook. Let's go back here. The link is the URI of the Facebook documentation, and I will provide a name. So again, adding a name, name equal name of the link. So I can have a, a name, I can have a message, I can have the link itself, and I can have a, a, a caption. A caption, it will be caption of the link. And last but not least, I can also have a description. Description equal my description. 
Okay. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm posting this request. I will do the submit. And I have a new post. So let's check that uh, this has worked. Let's go back to my Facebook account. This is my previous one, just with the message. If I'm refreshing, I should get a new one. You see, it's a message associated to, to the link. You can find all the, all the details. So you have the, the message, you have the name of the link, you have the description, and you have the pointer to the link itself. And Facebook is fetching the, the image that you will find into the page. This is uh, why we get this, uh, this uh, detail. And you get the, the caption over there. See, we've seen the message. We have an answer, an announced message with uh, with the link. So let's go back to the C sharp code. Back to the C sharp code, and the construction, the building of the URI is a little bit different because I need to get the link, the name, and the description. And uh, I'm formatting with this. I have the message that I got exactly the same message as a simple message, and then I'm adding to the query string the information if I get it. So if I if I get a link, then I'm uh, I'm adding the the link. If I have a name, then I'm adding the name, and if I have a description, I'm adding the description. Remember, all these strings must be escaped first. Otherwise, you will get a an error when you send uh, this uh, link. So you got all the information to get the list of the post in your feed and to be able to post either a simple message or a more full um, link-based kind of message. Happy coding! Bye!